There are three books that you must read if you want to excel as a software developer, engineer, tech lead, or architect. I'm sure that you already know these titles, but I'm also confident that you never took enough time to read them in detail. These are books that you don't read only once. These are books that you will use over and over again during the course of your career as a software engineer, especially when you're designing software. Let's start with the first book. The first book I want you to read is Domain Driven Design by Eric Evans. If I had to choose one book, I have no doubt I would choose this book. The reason is that it teaches you how to translate a real-world problem into a logical model that you can use to code your application and to communicate with all stakeholders in a project, be it the executives or the developers. This is the most complete book you will find on software development. It starts by explaining you what a domain model is and why it's important. Then you move to tactical domain-driven design when you learn the building blocks that you will use when designing a model like entities and value objects. Then you learn about the importance of refactoring. And finally, you will move on to strategic domain-driven design. And this is essential when you're dealing with a system that is complex and very large. So large that it might involve multiple development teams. I know that some people believe that domain-driven design is obsolete, but I strongly disagree. Every software system has a domain, and if you don't design for it, you will end up with crap software. Software that it's difficult to maintain and impossible to extend. The second book I want you to read is Design Patterns, also known as the Gang of Four book. I want you to read this book because it will teach you to structure your code in a way that is readable, easy to maintain, and extendable. A pattern is simply a solution to a common problem when encountering software development. All patterns in the book have a name, problem, solution, and consequences. The name is very important because whenever you're collaborating with your team, rather than explaining your solution in detail, you can simply name the pattern, like the observer pattern or the memento pattern. The problem is important because it explains you on which scenarios or problems you can apply the pattern. The solution is the explanation of the pattern itself and finally, the consequences are the result of the pattern and also the trade-offs that you have to take into consideration when leveraging this pattern. In other words, the pattern has some strong points, some advantages, but also some disadvantages that you need to be aware of. The patterns are grouped into three categories, the creational, structural, and behavioral. The creational pattern, as the name implies, is used whenever we create objects. Sometimes an object may be difficult to create because it has many fields or complex validation, and in here you will find patterns that will help you in that phase, like the builder pattern. The structural patterns instead teach you how to combine multiple objects into a structure that is more powerful. And finally, we have behavioral patterns that are just objects collaborating in a particular algorithm. This is not a book that you need to read from start to end. You can simply refer to it whenever you have a problem and you want to find a pattern that applies to it. On the internet, you will read that some of these patterns are obsolete. However, that's not the point. Most of the patterns are popular. But the most important thing is that you will learn to recognize recurring problems, generalize them, and find reusable solutions for them. And that's the most important skill that you can get from this book. The last book I want you to read is 
Enterprise Integration Patterns. And you must read this book, especially if you intend to progress from software developer to software architect. The patterns that you will learn in this book are different from those that you will find in the Gang of Four book, the design patterns. In there, you find solutions to problems you encounter when you're coding a single application. In this book, instead, you will find solutions to integrate multiple components or applications in a way that is resilient and scalable. The main concept you will learn is messaging with the pipes and filters architecture. In other words, you will learn to split a large task into smaller and independent processing units, which are the filters, which would be connected by channels, which are the pipes. After reading this book, you will have a better understanding of event-driven systems. And especially in the context of microservices architectures, you will be able to create systems where the services are highly decoupled and independent. As you open the book, you will find a list of all patterns. Each pattern has an icon that already gives an idea of what it might do, and it also has a very short description. So this is another book that you don't need to read from start to end, but you can simply use whenever you're trying to solve a particular integration problem, like guaranteed delivery. I can tell you that out of the three books, this is the most fun because it will allow you to create intricate and elegant data flows. This is it. I gave you three books that represent the foundation of most elite software developers or software architects. Now it's up to you. What do you want to do? Do you want to remain an average software developer or you want to join the elite by watching one of these videos?